Hey everyone, it's me, Aaron, and welcome to another episode of Kick It, the show every other week on this channel where we come in here and spotlight a crowdfunded project that you guys can go and support right now. Now, before we get into today's project, let me give you a little bit of an update on the last project that we spotlighted. Last time we talked about the Save the Aquabats campaign in which the band the Aquabats was trying to raise money in order to make a brand new album and also record another season of their TV series. And with just a couple of days left before their campaign was set to end, they decided to cancel the campaign. And I looked at it, and yes, they had not hit their goal just yet, but they were over halfway there, and the majority of Kickstarter campaigns actually receive a huge chunk of their funding in the last 48 hours. That's when Kickstarter sends out the little alert and goes, hey guys, now is the last time to donate. Anybody who wants to put some money in, this is your last chance. So I was looking at that and going, yeah, okay, you hadn't hit the goal yet, but you could still totally have done it. You could absolutely have hit this goal. Why on earth would you decide to cancel it? But another question that I had was, why do you need to raise this money for a TV series? Because they had been putting out little mini-sodes on the web to try and promote this Kickstarter campaign. Not full half hour long episodes that you would need to make for a TV series. No, just short little five minute long episodes that they had been putting up that had basically just been mini episodes of the TV show. I was looking at it and I was like, this is everything that I loved about the TV series. It's all the crazy imagination, all the great sense of humor. I'm loving all the guest stars that you have popping up in here. This is absolutely perfect. Why do you really need to make a TV show for network television or cable? I don't really understand why you can't just do this. They thought the exact same thing. That's why they canceled their Kickstarter campaign. It's so that they could launch a brand new Kickstarter campaign in which instead of asking for over a million dollars, because that's how much it costs to make shows for cable TV, they decided to just ask for $100,000 because that's how much it costs to make webisodes. That's how much it costs to make little mini episodes that they could just put up on their YouTube channel. And holy cow, they have already decimated that goal. But I just wanted to come in here and just give you guys an update on that because for anybody out there who saw our last episode and went, okay, I am definitely going to donate to this, they have a brand new campaign. That old campaign is done, but if you follow the link in the last episode that takes you to their old campaign, there's a link on that campaign to their new campaign. How many more times can I say campaign in this video? But okay, enough about that old campaign. Time to talk about today's campaign. But today's campaign was actually kind of a tough one for me to pick because if you'll notice, we actually skipped the last episode of Kick It. Normally we do this show every other week on this channel, but two weeks ago we actually did not have an episode simply because I had five Kickstarters ready to go. Five that I was ready to spotlight on here and I kept thinking, okay, by the time we get to the next episode of Kick It, one of these is still going to need funding. And by the time that we got to the next episode of Kick It, every single one of them had surpassed their goal by a country mile. Every single one of them was doing gangbusters. So yeah, they really didn't need any attention on my part. And almost every single one of those campaigns I was going to spotlight have ended now, but in case you guys are curious, Max Gentleman Sexy Business, the dating game where you also try and manage your turn of the century business or Boyfriend Dungeon, the dungeon crawler where your sword turns into a boyfriend or girlfriend that you try and date. Those ones are still going on. They're doing incredibly well. Not, neither of them need my help. But in case you are curious about what things I was going to spotlight in the last episode, those ones are still going on. I don't know why I was going to spotlight two dating games. It just so happens that they both look really interesting. So there you go. So what am I spotlighting today? Well, I mentioned all those other campaigns that succeeded because today, as I was playing for this episode, I was like, okay, last time I checked on this campaign, they still need about $3,000. And since then, they have gotten about $6,000. So this one has also surpassed its goal. This one also doesn't need help. However, I am still going to come in here today and spotlight this campaign for a reason that I will tell you in just a moment. Campaign is a documentary called The Last Blockbuster. For anybody out there as old as I am, you remember blockbusters the same way that you remember, I don't know, air, water, trees, food. Blockbusters used to be everywhere. They were an institution in this country. They might as well have been on the flag. They were such a big part of America. Blockbusters, in 1989, there were 9,000 stores in this country, and they estimated that once every 17 hours, they started building a new one. That's kind of a big deal. 
They were the place where everyone in America would go every single Friday night in order to rent themselves a new movie, a new video game, some form of entertainment for the weekend. I loved going into Blockbuster. It really was kind of a unique experience, but now they're all gone. Well, not all of them. There is one Blockbuster still left. And this documentary is all about the people who work there, all about the people who run there, the people who still shop there, but also just about what Blockbuster was, what it meant to uh, filmgoers in America, what it meant to the movie junkies out there, what it meant to the people who used to work there. Because as I said, for anybody my age, it kind of was a big deal. Everybody loved going to Blockbuster, and then they were so disappointed when they got there and everything they wanted to watch had already been rented out. But yeah, it was so unique always getting to go into Blockbuster because you would always find stuff in there that you never expected to check out. I mean, one of the reasons why I love movies so much is probably because I always used to go into Blockbuster and I would find stuff that I never even heard of. There was just really crazy VHS covers that I would constantly see in that store and go, oh shoot, I have no idea what this thing is, but I guess I'll check it out. That's how I discovered some really weird stuff that I eventually ended up loving, like, I don't know, Evil Dead, my favorite horror franchise of all time. Yeah, man, it was because Blockbuster was just designed to be perused around. And I was watching the little sample video of what they planned on making up on their Kickstarter page, and I thought, okay, they're just going to interview like maybe some people who shop there, the people who work there, the owner of the store, which they do that as well. But they started having celebrity guests pop up in here. Paul Shear popped up in here, who a lot of you guys probably know from the podcast, How Did This Get Made, where he and other stand-up comedians reviewed the worst movies ever made. I kind of have a soft spot for that podcast, but he was talking about what it was like to work at Blockbuster, what it was like to go into Blockbuster, and they got all these other like filmmakers coming in here, talking about their experience with Blockbuster, and the moment that I saw that, that's when it hit me, oh, Blockbuster means a lot of things to a lot of different people. A lot of different people had different experiences with Blockbuster, and they probably have their own unique stories to tell, but stories that all of us can relate to. Because like I said, this was a shared experience that everyone in America had. So as I was watching this, it really did kind of hit me, oh wow, this isn't just a thing that should be forgotten to the sands of time. This really is kind of an experience, and it kind of would be nice to have a film where people just get to share their experiences with us. I mean, there's moments in that documentary where people are just opening up the cases that they would get at Blockbuster. And I was looking at that like, yeah, man, that was just kind of a unique experience when you get home and you just pop that giant case open. However, I will say nobody in this video cut their thumbs on those Blockbuster cases. So I don't really think that this is that much of a realistic scenario that they're creating. Uh, am I the only person who just sliced their hands wide open several times on those Blockbuster cases? They made those cases out of razor blades. Uh, but yeah, sorry, I'm throwing my own personal experience with Blockbuster now. But that's my point. We all kind of have unique experiences with Blockbusters. We have unique memories with them. And I think that if we don't really capture this on film, it is the kind of thing that will end up being forgotten because nobody who grew up in the age of Netflix and Amazon Prime and direct streaming and all of these other things that I'm going to say that make me look like such a crazy old man, more than wearing an Alter Beast t-shirt does. Uh, yeah, I think that's the kind of thing that anybody of a younger generation doesn't really understand. They can't really relate to in the same way that we can, but hearing the stories from these people directly from them yeah, it helps to be able to pass that down. It helps to be able to let younger generations go, oh man, this is what people have to used to actually have to do. So yeah, I actually think that this kind of is a little bit of an important documentary to make. And I think it's a very unique documentary. That's the thing about documentaries. I love them because so many people are able to tell stories that you would never think were worth telling through documentaries. Uh, before I started up the Professor Thorgy channel, I actually used to have a blog called Dr. Documentary. I don't know why all my online personas require me to give myself a title that I did not actually earn, but yeah, I used to have a little blog in which I reviewed documentaries because there's so many unique ones out there that tell really fascinating stories, and I think that this could be another one. And they've actually got some interesting rewards for this. For example, if you donate $50, you can actually get yourself an official Blockbuster employee t-shirt. Not just a t-shirt that says Blockbuster on it, and then you can point out with your friends and go, ah, remember this thing? Nostalgia. 
No, an official Blockbuster employee t-shirt. And you might be wondering, who on earth would want that? Hipsters. And as a hipster, I will come in here and say, yeah, I kind of do actually want that. That might actually be what I end up donating to this project. However, however, as I said, they're asking for $20,000 and they're already at $23,000. So they have already hit their goal. They're doing just fine. There's still 10 days left in this project. So you might be wondering, why am I coming in here and spotlighting a project that has already surpassed its goal? Well, a couple of reasons. The first reason is that we've spotlighted a lot of different projects on Kick It. We've spotlighted games, both video and board games. We've spotlighted comic books. We've spotlighted TV shows. We've never spotlighted a film, especially a documentary. And as I said, as a big fan of documentaries, I think they're telling some of the most fascinating stories out there. So yeah, I kind of just wanted to spotlight a documentary on this. But the main reason why I am still spotlighting this on Kick It is because I used to work at film festivals, and I know that these guys want this film to be released in theaters. However, the way to get that to happen is to release it through film festivals until some producers can find it and go, oh, we want to actually back this and actually get it in theaters. So they're actually going to have to submit this to lots and lots of film festivals. And again, as I said, I used to work in film festivals. I've worked in three different ones over my lifetime over the course of several years, and I can tell you, submitting your film to a film festival is insanely expensive. Whenever anybody talks about the production cost for making a movie, they always talk about the cameras, the lighting, the actors, all the other stuff that seems obvious. No one ever realizes how much it is going to cost you to submit your film to film festivals. It can cost you hundreds of dollars just to submit to one festival and if they review it and go, yeah, no, we're not going to show this here. It's, it's not for us. It's not like they refund you the money. That money is just gone now. People go through thousands of dollars submitting their films to film festivals, and who knows if they'll even be accepted. It's a massive gamble. I know a lot of independent films out there actually have about half of their production costs go into just submitting them to film festivals. So the more money they make, the more festivals they can actually submit it to. The more money they make, the better shot it has at actually getting into these festivals, actually being seen by the right people who will then be able to put onto larger venues. So yeah, I absolutely want to come in here and support this project and get as much money as it possibly can because I know that when it comes to making an independent film, there's no upper limit to how much money you need because it's not like you eventually hit a point and you're just like, well, I don't know what to spend the rest of this money on. No, you know, submitting it to film festivals. That's insanely expensive. So that's why I still want to come in here and spotlight this project. Thanks for checking out our video today, everyone. If you want to back this project, a link to its Kickstarter will be in the description down below. And remember, we do this show every other week on this channel, so I'm always looking for new crowdfunded projects to spotlight. So if you know of any that you think deserve some attention, you can always contact me on Twitter, Twitch, or Tumblr at Professor Thorgy. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Come back next time. Bye.